Hi folks, it's Ron with Ideal. Many of you know that we make Cat6 plugs to go on the end of Category 6 cables. Now, our Cat6 plugs that we sell are actually three pieces in design, and we do that on purpose. And you got to understand something, and that is that Category 6 cabling and connectivity is about 12 times better at reducing noise and crosstalk than what you'll find in Cat5e cables. So hence, the Cat6 connections and cabling have to be a little bit better. And by making these things three pieces, we take a lot of user error out of uh, assembling one of these modular plugs. In other words, you've got to use all the parts and you need to assemble it properly in order to get that Cat6 performance you're looking for out of that connection in the field. Now, I tell everybody, a little practice goes a long way here, man. And uh, go home with a box of connectors and a hunk of wire and put one on and cut it off and put one on and cut it off. And sooner or later, you're going to feel pretty proficient in putting on these Cat6 modular plugs so you can do it quickly and efficiently out in the field. Now, recently, we've made a new design change to the liner in the modular plug to help you consistently make good quality Cat6 uh, connections up. So I'm going to step you through uh, how to actually put on the modular plug and I'll move over to a close-up so you can actually watch me do it. Here's a nice close-up view of the three-piece Cat6 plug here. And what you'll see here is there's three parts, as I said. One is here is what we call the, the sled device. And we're going to put that on the conductors or the cables first when we go to make this plug up. The second part is this liner. And there's been a pretty significant change in it and the fact that the wires don't always go through it like they used to. And I'll show you in a minute how to actually put that on. Then, of course, you have the body of the plug here as well that houses actually the, the gold pins in it. Now, we have to use 50 micron uh, gold-plated pins in our uh, plugs to make sure they're compliant with the FCC. That's not always true with some other brands you'll find out there, which means they can be inserted and extracted quite a few times before wearing through that gold plate. And here's a uh, completed-looking plug when we get done with one. Okay, And when you look at the side of the plug, You'll see the strain relief is fully seated on top of the outer jacket, so it gives us a lot of pull-out strength there. You'll see that little sled device in there, and then that liner in the front there. And the liner, what its job is to actually hold the conductors in place, and the pins will actually pass through a little slot in that liner and uh, actually make good, solid connections with that particular conductor on the side there, you see. Now, you'll also notice that all the gold pins are fully seated now, and when they uh, not haven't been crimped down, you'll find that they're not fully seated, and as dies wear out in the crimping tools, you know, they don't crimp all the pins evenly, so I tell guys take a couple seconds and look at that and make sure all the pins are fully seated. And then I can see right here at the very end of the modular plug, I can see the shiny little conductors through the clear front, which tells me that's a properly installed uh, Cat6 modular plug, and I'll show you next how to actually make that plug up. The first step in installing the Cat6 modular plug is to actually remove a little bit of the outer jacketing. I tell guys usually about one and a half to two inches is just about right. Anything else is just a whole lot of stripping you're going to have to do. And typically with a conventional stripping tool, I tell guys that when you uh, line that up, you gauge your inch and a half, two inches, only go once around with the stripping tool. That way the little cutting blade inside the tool will kind of score the jackets and you kind of just kind of pop and break them like that. And you'll find that most of your Cat6 cable today does not have a middle uh, plastic spline in it anymore. Uh, uh, but if it does, we'll end up cutting that off, even with the outer jacketing as well. And uh, if it has a, a nylon rip cord, go ahead and cut that out as well. Okay. Now, one of the first tips I can give you about how to get the wires to lay straight inside these little plugs is to, uh, when you fold out the pairs, you're going to fold out the wires where they naturally lay around the outer jacketing and you'll find that all the pairs will naturally lay somewhere around the outer jacketing and as a general rule you'll see that the green is opposite of blue always and the orange is always opposite the brown and the next step is to actually install that little sled device on these conductors after stripping off the outer jacketing we're going to install this little sled device on the uh, cable itself here now You'll notice on that little sled device, there's an opening on this side, there's an opening here, and there's kind of a slot top and bottom of that. Well, first thing we need to do is make a decision, do we want to wire 568A or 568B? And in most cases, it'll be the B format. And uh, with the B format, the orange should be on the left and brown should be on the right. Now, that little opening in that little sled device is kind of small, so I'm going to make sure that these uh, conductors are nice and pinched tight together here on the end. And before I untwist anything, I'm going to bring those two uh, up close together, okay, 
side by side, and then I'm going to install, install those little wires or conductors in that little sled device. I'll say that. Like I said, you need to make sure those conductors are pretty tightly twisted together. There we go. There we are. And very simply install it and push that all the way down to the jacketing or as close as you can get it, okay? And I kind of spread them out a little bit. And then after that, we're going to actually untwist all of these pairs now. Now, when you untwist the pairs, you need to untwist everything, even through that little plastic device. And uh, I find that uh, when I untwist pairs, that I get them on that knuckle-like right there, I can untwist the pairs a little better than on the end of my fingertips and maybe finish it with my fingertips. So that's a little technique I've learned over the years of untwisting conductors, which uh, takes a little finger strength to do, especially with the CAT6 cables, okay? And now I got, and I need to get, again, all the twists out of the conductors and get everything nice and straight, and then to finally uh, get it to a point where I'm going to lay it in that B format, which I'm going to do for you next. So there's the uh, sled device installed, and uh, with the um, uh, pairs untwisted ready to be put out into the B format. After you have the sled on and you started in the uh, 568B sequence like I have here, we're actually going to lay the conductors into that 568B sequence and make sure that these middle pairs, the green and the blue, end up in the little slots that run through that little sled. So to do that, I'm just going to take the pairs and you'll notice that I've, when I've untwisted this white, orange, and orange all the way through that little plastic uh, uh, sled device, it go, the, the B sequence goes white, orange, and orange, like it's supposed to. Then you'll notice I have the green and white green are going to go in there next. And so the next third conductor is white green. And then you'll see the blue and the white blue. And I'm going to run those through the back side of that little plug. And then I've got green next. And then white, brown, brown. And we've laid them out in a B sequence. Okay. And you can see I'm using a little slot here. Uh, on the top of this for the green pair, and I'm using the slot in the back here uh, for the blue pair. Now that I have them laid out in the 568B configuration, I get a, need to get them all nice and tight and together looking. So to do that, I'm going to come out past that little plastic part and kind of pinch everything flat with my thumb and forefinger with one hand. And then the other hand, I'm going to take these top pairs and move them toward the middle and just kind of straighten them out. Uh, move these other pairs toward the middle and straighten them out. And then I'm going to bend these in several different planes. One is up and down, pulling them out. The next one is to grab the same way on either end and give them a little bit of a twist, okay, and pull them out. And then lastly, I kind of like to give them this little wiggle. And they should be sitting straight and flat. Now, it's pretty important that they're flat and straight as they come out of this little sled device because you're going to trim these to a quarter of an inch and you need to make sure they fit inside the liner device. So an added tip here for me is to make sure you bend them pretty tight like that right there and back and make sure again, they're nice and flat as they come out of this little sled device. And then we're gonna trim that to a quarter of an inch with our, si our snips. And when you trim this, you wanna go straight across the conductors. You don't, don't wanna cut at any fun, kind of an angle at all and give yourself a, a quarter of an inch, okay? And it's pretty important that you're pretty accurate on your quarter of an inch because the liner device is going to go on that next. The next step after you've installed the little uh, sled device, you've got the conductors in the right color format, which is in this case is 5CCB, and you'll notice how I've got them pretty nice and straight looking. And they're right about a quarter of an inch. The next thing we'll do is put this little sled device or liner device on. Now, when you look at that liner, it's got an opening on one end of it here. And it also has kind of a bevel in it here that you can see. And when you install that on the conductors, your white orange is on the left. The bevel is facing you when you install the conductors in there. And uh, if you trim them nicely and they're nice and straight, the little uh, liner should slide on there pretty easily. If you have a little gap between the two uh, products, it's not, uh, not a big deal here. What I'm looking for, in a, not a big gap, but a little bit uh, gap is okay. But what I'm looking for is to see that the conductors are fully through that little liner device. Uh, there's a slot in there that's going to hold the conductors in place so the pins can pass through it to make the contact. And I can see all those conductors through that clear end, and that is ready to be crimped inside of the modular plug, which we'll do next. The last step is to insert this assembly inside the body of the plug. Now, 
the reason I had you guys install that liner uh, with the bevel up and, you know, white orange to your left bevel up is because when you install that inside the uh, uh, body of the plug, there's a, a matching bevel that matches this. So if you don't install that with a bevel up, you're never going to get the plug assembled properly. So very simply, insert that assembly up inside the plug, and you're going to want to really bottom it out inside the plug. And you can tell if you've done that right, because if you turn on its side, you'll see the outer jacket is underneath the strain relief. And uh, you'll notice that the sled and the liner are fully seated with the front end of the modular plug. And then I can look right here uh, through the clear end, and I can actually see the conductors when I press on it like that. So it should be ready to be crimped with the standard crimping tool, which I'll insert it inside of my uh, 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 die desk for RJ45s. And I'm going to make sure I'm inserting that wire fully seated inside the modular plug. I'm not pulling at some funny, strange angle straight up and down on it and make sure it's in there good. And then give this thing a good squeeze. And there is a completed modular plug uh, that should work just great. And we'll test it next. Here's a little pretty long patch cord I just got done making up. But again, I put a Cat6 plug on either end of this cable. And one end is plugged into my remote unit. The other one is plugged into my main unit of my Signal Tech 2 qualification tester here from Ideal Industries. And with it, I can check the wire map, make sure there aren't any mistakes in the, you know, as far as opens and shorts. And I can also actually make sure that this cable supports gigabit Ethernet. Now to do that, I'll simply hit the auto test button and the tester automatically starts making those tests. And the first test it's going to make is on the actual wire map itself. And I can actually uh, hit the enter button and actually watch that wire map test being done. And it shows me all the pairs are good. Uh, it indicates that it gives me the length of the individual pairs here as well. So I know it passed the wire map test. And if I escape out of here, it, uh, it will now start making the data test. And actually, we can actually look at the packets being sent from the main unit here to the remote unit. And if the remote unit gets all the packets, well, then that cable supports gigabit ethernet which it actually did which is good so there you have it there's a properly terminated cat6 patch cord using the cat6 plugs and thanks for watching folks i'm ron with ideal and i'll see you on the next one